Hi, my name is Kylie. I live in Boise, Idaho with my husband and daughter, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make some soaking bath salts today. Um, I started doing this a few years ago because I love to take baths. I do a lot of hiking and a lot of outdoor stuff with my family, and that also makes me very tired. So I do love my baths, but I was having a really hard time finding uh, bath soaks that didn't have um, artificial fragrances in them, that used good natural ingredients, and they were also really expensive. So I started doing it myself, and I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is for you to do it yourself today too. So I've got some very simple ingredients here. All of these uh, you guys can find in the supermarket, natural food market, online, very easy to come by. Um, so hopefully you guys won't have any issues getting any of this stuff and be able to make your own. We're gonna start here with our pure Epsom salt. That's gonna be the base for our soaking salts today. Just make sure when you guys are looking for these, you're not getting um, anything with any additives or anything. You'll most likely find these in your first aid section of the grocery store or online. Um, you're gonna wanna look again for pure Epsom salts. So no additives, no fragrances, just the magnesium sulfate solution. Next thing we're gonna be putting in here is coarse Himalayan sea salt, which we have here. You can see that it's very, uh, very coarse. It's not finely grated at all. You can also find this in the supermarket. They typically tend to sell it in bulk, so you guys can buy big things of it here, as opposed to the small little shakers in the salt aisle. They usually have big ones like this, or you can buy them online um, for $10, $15. Use it for this, use it for seasoning, um, and this will last you a really long time. The third and final main ingredient in the base of our mixture today is here. This is our baking soda. So typical baking soda, if you have anything in the baking aisle, what you, the same stuff that you would use to bake a cake, that's what we're gonna use here. So we're just using some good old fashioned Arm & Hammer baking soda. We have here, I have already measured out some essential oils and we'll talk a little bit more about those. You can find those at health food markets the natural food section, um, Hobby Lobby sells them, Michael's and Joann's probably sell them at this point. And of course you can find those online. Um, a couple of optional things I've uh, added to this table here are some dried flowers. Again, very easy to find online or find in your garden, dry out some flowers, crush them up, put them in here. And also some powdered milk. Um, today we're gonna be using powdered coconut milk. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start here. So I've pre-measured everything. We've got two cups of Epsom salt here in this large bowl. And I'm gonna add one cup of the pink Himalayan salts. After that, I'm going to go ahead and add my baking soda. I've got two tablespoons of baking soda. And I'm gonna mix this together to start. Um, I use a little wire whisk for this. It just kind of helps distribute everything and some things like Epsom salts and powdered milks can create little chunks sometimes if they have any moisture in them. So this just kind of helps to break them up. So I just wanna make sure that this all gets mixed up together really well. And just pay attention to the ratio of ingredients. If you wanna make a smaller batch or a bigger batch for that matter, um, you can always do that. Um, so this is gonna make a pretty big batch of soaking salts here. So I've got all that mixed together. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do in this instance is add my essential oils. So lots of different combinations and you can also find already pre-combined little droppers of essential oils in lots of health food stores. So feel free to do that. Just make sure that they're natural in their sense that you like. Today, I'm gonna be using um, some sweet orange and lemon. Um, that's really great for if you like to take baths in the morning. It's very rejuvenating. Um, all those citrus scents are very good for kind of waking you up. If you're a, um, a person that likes to take baths at night, you can use things like lavender. Um, if you have sinus issues or a cold or anything like that, you can use things like eucalyptus and peppermint. Just make sure that you use all of them sparingly. Remember, you can always add more. Um, you just can't take it away. So start with a few drops of each, see what you think of the scent, and you can always add a little bit more. Um, and again, most of the, the essential oils that you'll find come with little droppers. So you'll just do that straight from the, straight from the bottle and then make sure that you are evenly distributing those throughout here as well. It already smells really good in here. All right, so this is as easy as it is to go ahead and make the easy base for 
your bath salts. Um, some reasons that these are good ingredients for bath salts. So Epsom salts are good for soothing your skin. Um, they de-stress and they're also great for sore muscles. So the solution of Epsom salt by itself is wonderful for taking soaks for your bath. Adding pink Himalayan sea salt uh, naturally cleans the skin and it restores minerals in the skin. So just adding one more layer of really nice restorative, may as well while you're relaxing, be doing those nice things for your body as well. And then the baking soda. Um, baking soda reacts really well with salts and water to, add as a, um, to act as a detoxifier for your body. Um, and it can actually also boost your immunity. So depending on how much you like to take baths, it can be really beneficial for you. So those are really the main therapeutic elements of, of a bath uh, soaking substances here. And then of course, adding the fragrances can be very you know uplifting for your spirits and things like that, but it's also great for, for that uh, delicious smell that you're gonna want while you're taking a bath. So a couple of the optional things I'm gonna add in here. I really like to add dried flowers. Just be aware of this if you don't like to have little pieces of flowers floating around in your bathtub going down your drain. Um, but it does make them look really pretty. So if you're doing them for gifts or things like that, I really like to add flowers. These are dried jasmine flowers. Um, again, you can really make these yourself if you get some flowers at the store, dry them out and add those in there. Um, we we'll wanna evenly distribute those. One thing I have noticed also about using dry flowers in these solutions is that it actually holds on to the essential oils really well and makes the scent last longer. So if you're going to put this in a bag or a jar and plan to use it over a period of time, um, it's really nice to have something dry and porous to absorb those oils. The other optional item I'm going to add into here is powdered coconut milk. So you can use any kind of powdered milk that you like. I really like to use a non-dairy powdered milk because it has a much longer shelf life. So it's not going to turn sour or spoil if it's exposed to the air. So um, the other really great thing about uh, coconut milk is it has a really nice coconut scent. Um, and any kind of milk that you use is going to be very, very soft and relaxing for your skin. So when you get out of your bath, you're going to notice that it's going to feel, um, you're gonna be able to feel that the results of that on your skin. Um, if you don't have powdered milk and you want to take a milk bath, you can always just use your Epsom salts and actually use real milk and put uh, milk in your bath. So for this instance, um, I'm using a quarter cup of powdered milk. Um, you can use about a half a cup of fresh milk in your bath if you want to take a milk bath. Other additives you can put in here, um, ground oats. Oats are great for your, great for your skin as well. Um, you can put oils in here like coconut oil or even olive oil, grapeseed oil. Those are all really nice oils for your skin. Um, I don't see a need to do that when you're already using a milk in here because you're getting a lot of those exfoliating properties anyhow, um, but you can just kind of play around with it and see what you like. So this is what we have made here. So this is your solution. Um, when you're ready to take a bath, you're gonna use about a quarter cup depending on how big your bathtub is, you're ready to go. So um, that's it, that's as easy as it is. Um, find a nice package to put in, you can put it in a nice bag, you can put them in glass jars, divvy it up, give it out as gifts, put it in a pretty jar on your bathtub. Um, but that's it, it's super simple, super easy to find these ingredients. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment. I'm happy to help. If you guys have questions about different essential oils and what goes well together or how to find any of these items, please let me know. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys enjoy your next bath.